Hello YouTube and welcome back to World of Warships with Wadres. And today's battle is going to be brought to you from the new tier 6 premium German battleship, the Prince Idol Friedrich. And yes, I will come right out and say that I bought her outright. Mainly because I wanted the Steel Monsters campaign, among other things. And I just figured that while I was buying the campaign, I might as well just go ahead and get the ship as well. And I can't say that I'm disappointed. She is definitely a very capable ship. She, Her armor profiles are very much in line with other ships at tier 6. And the nice thing is, as a battleship, she has a top speed of 29 knots with the speed flag enabled. So she is a nice quick battleship at tier 6, which is something of an oddity and makes her very much unique compared to just about all of the other battleships in the game at tier 6 right now. So with the exception of the Normandy, the Normandy does have a pretty nice top speed as well, but Beyond that, the Normandy is still a very bulky ship, whereas the Prince Idol Friedrich is a very long, narrow, sleek ship. And if you just uh, point or bow into uh, most targets, she has such a narrow profile that it can actually be hard to hit her. So that's one of the nice bonuses as well. Is just she's got a very <coughs> she's got a reasonably small profile. And that's something that I've definitely enjoyed utilizing. In fact, it's something that uh, I utilize quite heavily in this match here, which, uh, well, you'll. It, it's going to take a couple minutes to actually become quite noticeable as far as my uh, tactics goes, I guess. But I, I do very much rely on that narrow forward profile especially uh, towards the, uh, within the next few minutes, to be perfectly honest. And it's just, she becomes so hard to hit and so easy to mitigate a lot of damage. And it's, it makes her very nice to play. She's very workable, to uh, put it lightly. So, there is that. She does have reasonably strong guns for her tier. They aren't exactly the most accurate. They're kind of like shooting off the uh, Byron's guns, just they're a little bit more spaced out on the hull. And, I mean, overall, they are still German guns, so the dispersion, that uh, less likelihood to make the nice tight groupings, I mean, that that's one of the things the Germans are known for, and that is one of the bigger issues with her. But, again, she's a German battleship. When uh, things get down into close quarters, she does have a very nice secondary battery array that more than makes up for some of the uh, lackluster performance of the main battery guns. But at the same time, with a maximum range with the uh, secondary batteries flag, she does only get out to 7.6 kilometers with her secondary batteries, so when things are starting to get that close, even the dispersion on her main battery guns really doesn't play an incredible factor either. But it, it does at least make up for some of the, the uh, loss, if I do say so. And I mean, overall, she's definitely not bad. I've been enjoying the uh, few matches that I've played with her. I'm also working through the uh, Prince Idol Friedrich campaign, since I do have her. And, I mean, that's actually one of the reasons why I skipped into ranked, was just to uh, complete the first objective for starters, which was to have a 400 base EXP match in the Prince Idol Friedrich, which I pretty much knew I was not going to see easily in... Uh, Oh, in, in a regular co-op match. So I skipped in, did a couple of ranked battles, and now I'm back to co-ops. 
per my norm, but I just, I, I knew I wasn't going to get that from uh, my run-of-the-mill battle. But, I mean, again, I, I've definitely found myself enjoying her, and for the simple reason that I've been playing a lot of the higher tier battleships for so long, that it's nice having a ship at mid-tier that is reasonably quick and maneuverable, and it honestly feels like I'm playing a Tirpitz or a Bismarck, or really even the uh, Frederick the Great at... <coughs> sorry, at uh, tier 6. So there is that to be had. It feels a lot more comfortable to play in her after you've played a lot more of the high tier ships. So, again, but that's that's one of the things that I'm actually enjoying. She's, It makes her more than capable, to say the least. Now, as far as the battle you're watching goes, Things aren't exactly stellar, but they could be worse. <laughs> um, you'll notice I'm kind of backing away <laughs> from the vast majority of the uh, enemy force. But here's where that narrow profile comes in, because I've got a Graf Bay, I have the New Mexico, I have the Virginia 41. When it comes around the corner, I'm going to have the Normandy. I've got even the uh, Perth that is uh, close to giving me a uh, very, very uh, rough time, and I'm just mitigating all kinds of damage by sticking to the bow, sticking my bow straight forward, and just keeping myself angled towards them. And because my ship is so long and narrow, there's so small of a profile for them to hit that after a while they just switch over to better targets because I'm not giving them enough to actually shoot at. And when they decide to switch targets, that's when I say, okay, I'm out of here, I need to get myself into a better position. So I, I do, and when I turn away, I make sure that I'm, again, angled against their fire so that it's at least somewhat mitigated as it's coming in, while I try to duck a little bit away and get behind an island. So, yeah, I mean, she's she's definitely capable, and the simple fact that her speed is so fantastic allows her to move around in ways that aren't easily anticipated, or, well, I, I can't quite say that. But that they aren't as easy to counter at tier six as, say, a uh, any other battleship because again she's quick she moves around quickly. Um, so ships like the West Virginia Forty One, the New Mexico, the Normandy, her sheer maneuverability just throws them off, and that's one of the other things to make note of is because my ship is moving rather quickly, my ship is turning reasonably quickly, it's messing with the aim of these other players that are shooting at me too. And I've gotten the impression from their actual uh, combat skills here that these aren't bad players either. They know what they're doing, just like I know what I'm doing. But because they haven't encountered the ship many times before, they just don't know how to counterplay her or compensate for her maneuverability overall. And that plays very much into my into my hands. <clears throat> oh, and I finally killed that Graf Spee. That Graf Spee was so in need of being killed. But anyway, the one thing I will say is that because she is a tier 6, she does have 25 millimeters of bow and stern armor which at, at this tier, just about everything equal tier and above can more than overmatch her armor. In fact, I think the only thing that really can't that she can run into at higher tiers is the Scharnhorst. And that's only because it's got, I think it's 256 millimeter cannons as opposed to uh, 320 or uh, better. 
So, yeah, that's one of the things that I kind of have to work with, is that even even at equal tier, everything around me can overpin me, if they really, really tr aim well enough. But I still do my best to mitigate as much damage as possible, and just because the ship is so long and so narrow, it's working very much in my favor. And of course, because I've closed a lot of distance, my secondaries are going absolutely ballistic on targets. Now, I will say that I am... I did not come out on top for this team for this match. I'm going to say that right off the bat. But I did an incredible amount of work. And if you're, look, if you're watching my counter in the upper right corner of the screen here, just the sheer amount of damage that I tank is incredible. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm at 2 million potential damage already in a ranked sprint 5 versus 5 match. That is an incredible amount of firepower that I have <laughs> just absolutely basically nullified, for lack of a better term. Now, my biggest mistake was right here. And that was, instead of trying to put the last little bit of my attention onto the Normandy, I try to get the Perth. And, unfortunately, the Perth was ready for me. And I didn't have my guns loaded. Now that Perth, he did a very good job in this match as well. In fact, I think he actually came, comes out at the top of the uh, enemy team. But, I mean, overall... I mean, up until that point, this match was stellar on my part. And if I had gotten another good salvo or two instead of running into the Perth, I probably would have finished off the enemy Normandy and our battle would have been a victory. Which, yeah, unfortunately, spoiler alert, we do lose this match. It is a defeat. But it was a very hard-fought victory on the part of our opponent. We made them work for it. So as far as the victory goes, they deserved it. And as far as why my team lost the match, it was because there were a couple of very definite misplays on the part of my team. One, I probably should have gone with my war spite around B instead of trying to charge down the uh, two enemy battleships, for one thing. That's what put me into the line of sight of the Perth to begin with and did me in. So I could have changed things in that regard. Um... Granted, the Perth probably would have just chased me down and burned me down, but at least I would have had a shot at uh, taking it out. But then I wouldn't have gotten so much fire on the enemy battleships, and I probably would have been broadside to them as well. So there is that to consider. Now, our war spite does try to, uh, I guess, uh, hold his own as well, but he's having to face off against the Perth, our Perth is dealing with the enemy Perth, but unfortunately our Perth loses the uh, duel here. And our War Spite takes two torpedoes. Now, if our War Spite hadn't taken torpedoes, and I know I had warned for him to just keep going and not stop, so that's one of the things that I kind of get a little hurt about, I guess I could say, in that he should have listened, he should have stopped, but he didn't. Or he shouldn't have stopped, he should have just kept going around the island, but he didn't. And, yeah, he just, he took too much damage, he caught himself on fire, when he could have just kept going around C, and, or going around A, and just capped us out, and won the match, but he didn't, and here we are. So anyway, overall, definitely not a bad match. It is a defeat, uh, and a very much deserved defeat, but overall, I'm still happy with the match because it was a very hard-fought match. 
77,000 or 777,000 credits earned, 13,156 experience points, 8,800 free experience points for 106,000 damage done, more than 2 million damage potential damage tanked. Two ships destroyed, two citadel hits, four fires, 45 main battery hits, 85 secondary battery hits. That's, I mean, for a tier 6 ship that I've only played for a couple of matches so far, that's phenomenal, especially taking it into a competitive environment that I'm normally not comfortable in. So, yeah, definitely an excellent match. Sure, there were some misplays. Sure, there were a couple of things that could have gone differently, but still. And overall, I did come in second on my team with 1,126 base experience points earned, but simply for the potential damage I tanked alone, I think that was definitely a very deserved reward on my part. And of course, the enemy Normandy was not the best. It was, in fact, the enemy Perth, as I mentioned earlier, so very well played to him. Of course, my damage was very much spread around. I did the lion's share of damage to the Graf Spee. In fact, I think I'm the only one who did any damage to the Graf Spee. The uh, West Virginia 41, I did a substantial amount of damage to. The Normandy, I certainly chunked for a good bit also. And, I mean, overall, I was getting... I may not have had the greatest salvos in the world, but I was still getting reasonable damage in. So I was... I made myself a very viable threat to all of these ships. The only one that I didn't make my... that I wasn't an exceptional threat to was the Perth, and that's just because he kept himself smart and hidden and out of my field of view. I only managed to hit him with one shell. So, yeah. And, I mean, overall, still, 2.3 million damage potential. Damn. I mean, I haven't even seen numbers like that in my Missouri or my Montana in a regular co-op match. So, for me to be tanking that in a Tier 5 ranked battle, or, no, Tier 6 ranked battle is just mind-blowing. Anyway... Net earnings for the match, after spending only 71,000 credits on my resupply costs, I have an earning, net earning, of 705,000 credits for this match. And, of course, because this is also my... I'm running a wide variety of the uh, bonus flags, so substantial bonuses to both credits and experience points earnings here both free and regular experience points, and my commander, which is currently my 18-point Frederick the Great commander, also earns 23,617 exper experience points. So, yeah, definitely some uh, good points for progression in that regard as well. So, anyway, I suppose I will let you all go. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Um, I hope you all enjoyed my take on the Prince Idol Friedrich. Um, please do not forget to like and subscribe. Uh, stay safe, happy hunting, and I will catch you all next time.